You're breathtaking. Therapists have read it. What's something that a client has taught you, unknowingly, that you still treasure? In general, that humans can experience an incredible amount of trauma, loss, overall suffering and not only continue to exist, but continue to find meaning and even contentment in their lives. It's helped me to reframe my own trauma in a more helpful way and also made me less fearful of what my future may hold, recognizing that we can tolerate much, much more than we think we can. I work with college students, freshmen all the way through final years of PhD programs, med school, etc. and I'm amazed by their constant desire for knowledge, 18 yo and 40 yo, it doesn't matter, there is an information lust in all of them, it makes me more passionate about my field and I go to trainings and conferences thrilled to learn thanks to them. It's incredible, the difference in my mental state from working outpatient to working exclusively with the student population is amazing, they've saved my career. Just today someone said to me, I tell myself all the time if I can stay sober for the next 30 minutes I'm going to make it, sometimes I have to tell myself that more than once, but I make it every time, it really got to me today, that little saying has so much meaning behind it for so many things, it put in perspective for me that dealing with certain issues is a minute by minute thing, but I can make it no matter what. My teenage clients are how I learned about Reddit. Without exception I learn from every single one of my clients. I've learned that 12 year olds can think and talk with the wisdom of an 80 year old and you can be in your 60s and have lived with stunting trauma for decades. I've learned that life can beat someone every which way and give them the shittiest deck of cards and they still find things that make them smile. By far though, the number one thing I've learned that clients across demographics including religion, nationality, SES, age and gender desire is connection which usually boils down to being seen, heard, validated and understood. It is a universal need and slash or want to feel connected. Yes, even you, self-proclaimed ultra introvert who never needed nobody. Used to work with kids with mental health problem. The thing that has stick with me the most was what a teenager with autism once said to me. Sometime I feel really bad because the weatherman on TV tell me it'll rain tomorrow and most of the time he's right but sometime he's wrong and it's sunny. I guess it must be the same for mom and the doctor. It changed a lot in the way I've lived my life. So many things it isn't even funny. I get to learn about professions and hobbies that I have zero knowledge about or desire to do. But I like knowing, beyond being taught something, two things have that clients have told me have made me feel so good and have stayed with me. So, I use acceptance and commitment therapy as my approach. It is an approach that I use in my life so I will use examples of how I use it to help guide clients. I was giving an example of getting caught up in thoughts while on a walk on the weekend specifically thoughts about how this very client was doing because she and I had practiced a very difficult script for her to set some boundaries. I was getting swept away and wasn't present on my walk, so I dropped anchor and got in the present. That client said that knowing that I think about her and her well-being outside of session made her feel so special and cared for. I took it for granted that clients knew we think about them. Half of my case planning comes from walking thoughts or driving thoughts. It changed how I practice. I make sure to share, in appropriate ways, how often I do think about my client's well-being outside of session. Another was about six years ago. I was sick with my autoimmune disorder. About 100 pounds overweight. Medications weren't working. I was the only therapist for my work side as they couldn't fill positions. I burned out. Ended up on stress leave for six weeks. I returned to work kinda questioning how can I be a good therapist if I burned out. I returned to a handwritten letter from a client from the year previous. She wrote a thank you letter that told me how she had continued to use the skills we worked on how she had changed her life, and the impact I made in her. Literally, this woman's letter saved my career. I truly love my work and I keep way better work-life balance now that I am more adept to living with a chronic illness. Also, I am 95 pounds lighter now too. I got healthy. I had a client who was diagnosed with anxiety and depression. He is 15 and refused to take medication for it. His grandmother came to stay with him from India and together they began meditating. My first session with him was two weeks after his grandmother came. He was in such a bad place. He wasn't eating and was having panic attacks. He was adamant about not taking medicine despite his bad state. I helped him a little through CBT, but it was the meditation that was helping him over the next six weeks that I worked with him. It was amazing to see this young man come back to life. He started to show interest in doing things again and you could see the life return to his eyes. At the last few sessions he was laughing and his mother was saying that she has not seen that side of him in over a year. I have heard about meditation helping people with depression and anxiety, but I was a skeptic. This client showed me just how powerful meditation is. Speech therapist so not a psych, but did learn sometimes the things that worry you as a therapist. Don't worry the client, and if they're not worried you shouldn't be worried because you're there to help them, not impose on them. That everyone suffers in some way or another, 
The circumstances leading up to the suffering are different but the underlying emotional pain is the same. You can't compare circumstances with others and this comparison often leads to more misery, but you can connect with people by sitting with their suffering. When talking about two people being in a relationship, a child I was working with described it as 1 plus 1 equals 2, changed the perspective of my other half or looking at two people in a relationship as whole. I know use two distinct wholes, one person, who choose to come together as two. I'm a mental health therapist in a high school. One of my clients has CP and has almost no mobility. She taught me to stop treating doing things for myself as a chore, making a meal, exercise, housework etc because I'm lucky that my body allows me to take care of myself. Something I inadvertently taught my therapist is when I'm really struggling to start my day. I divide it up into quest objectives a la video games, i.e. shower, breakfast and rest get to work on time complete at least three briefs today and so on and so forth. It really helps me set short-term goals for getting through the day. She told me she has subsequently used this method with other clients and it's worked well. I was the patient but during an early session I mentioned the chaplain quote a day without laughter is a day wasted and my therapist had never heard that before and said they were going to use that. I saw it as a quote hanging on their wall soon thereafter. It's bittersweet. I had child PT that thought that she was overweight. I explained to her that her weight includes her muscle and organs and bones. I taught her that muscle is much denser than fat. I told her fun fact that her head weights 8 pounds. She thought she was all fat. Her face lit up. I was sad that she was so concerned with her worth in terms of weight insert feminist ran here. But that I got to teach her. I love that part of my job includes teaching people like this. A patient, 10 years old, stole her divorced mother's cell phone to call me and asked who I was having dinner with. I was alone. And I don't know why but I replied that I was with my family and he said I'm having dinner alone but it's okay I asked him if I could help him with something and he said he was making dinner and wanted to talk with someone. We chatted about her next round of Ono for 2 minutes and then he said he needed to go. I then ever felt alone since. How to let go, over and over again, of people I care about. So many years of intensely relating, and giving, and letting go. I treasure the gift of being in a place to learn that lesson. It has helped me be a better friend and family member to not hold on so tight. Human beings are shockingly determined and resilient, even if it's not in the direction you'd expect. No one wakes up and decides I'm gonna go kick puppies today. People are assholes by design someone taught them this behavior is okay somehow, and sometimes it was through pain. Find that core, and you can find empathy for almost anyone. If you can feel empathy for someone, then you might just be able to speak with and connect with them. I'm a therapist for children with autism. These kids go to school and then therapy 5 days a week, adding up to 10 hours a day, more than some working adults, most of the kids at least. They work hard to increase their skill sets. I have struggled with severe anxiety and still struggle with it sometimes. While I'm teaching them life skills, they teach me perseverance through tough days and to smile and keep going even through the mistakes. These kids never fail to amaze me and I'm so proud to say I work with them. I'm a therapist in a psychiatric hospital and my patients have taught me how thin the line is between being mentally healthy and ill. Many of my patients were healthy and high functioning until one event happened to them. That could be anyone. We are all just one incident away from being permanently ill. I am grateful and humbled by the tenacity of my patients, and for each day I am healthy. The biggest thing I take away from all my sessions is how amazingly resilient and optimistic people inherently are. When we push through all the negative thoughts and faulty beliefs that keep us stuck, our core is hope and promise for the future. Small children are the best examples of this. They can have experienced horrific traumas and come out on the other side well adjusted and having learned to develop healthy attachments. I'm amazed every day by my clients. I work with a lot of grad students, which means I learn a lot about various research projects in areas from archaeology to vet med to communications. As a researcher myself, I always enjoy learning more about other areas. I was with a patient who said, I'm your most important patient, because you're with me right now. I've taken that with me. No matter how busy I am, I try to focus on that one patient like I have all the time in the world. Obligatory not a therapist, but a patient who'd like to think that I teach her things. I often express my issues through humor. For humor, I tend to use a lot of made-up words or meme lingo which she doesn't really understand. I teach her all sorts of things and what they mean. However, she has a very thick Hispanic accent. We live in the US and can't really pronounce some words well, which makes it even better for me. We did a project one time where she had me or a friend draw turtles on my arm when I felt like self-harming, because turtles are my favorite animal. But she pronounces a tortler and I'll never correct her on it. Anyways. She once told me to eat my negative emotions. I love her, and I hope that she really is learning some stuff from me lol. One day, I was feeling very bad at work. 
because of something that happened outside of work. I was walking around the dining room getting dishes to wash, when an old woman, a regular, saw the look on my face and told me I looked very nice today. She gave me a genuine compliment. In an attempt to cheer me up, I learned that customers can most definitely pick up on how you're feeling, even when you don't make it evident, especially if it's a negative feeling. You should always leave your baggage at the door and enjoy your day at work. I am so thankful she was compassionate enough to try to cheer me up, instead of commenting on how I didn't look happy or wasn't working fast enough or complain to the owner. Definitely learned a good lesson that day. Please subscribe if you liked the video. It really helps the channel to grow. See you again.